Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Autodesk's Digital Builder Podcast, a show that inspires construction professionals to innovate and use technology to improve how they build our world. I'm Eric Thomas, and I've been working in construction for nearly a decade. And now I have the privilege to sit down with industry trailblazers to hear how they're solving construction's biggest challenges and redefining the future of the built environment. Hello and welcome to Autodesk Digital Builder Podcast. I am your host, Eric Thomas. We are live at Autodesk University at the end of day two, and I am here with Brooke Gamel, the Emerging Technology Manager from Skanska. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, having a great AU this year. Is this your first AU? Have you been here before or no? This is my second AU. I was here back in 2019. Okay. It feels like ages ago, so it's nice to finally be back. It does. Like three full years of not being able to see everybody and have these conversations. But we are back, and today we are talking about robotics. So you had a session here this week, and I am excited to learn a little bit more about what you've been working on. And so let's just dive straight in. I'd like to hear a little bit more about the current state of robotics within construction. And I'm also interested and what people are really doing and how common leveraging that technology is today on site. Definitely. We're starting to see so many more robotic applications. I think one thing that may be a misconception is just how readily available they are on projects. Most of the tools that are out there are only being piloted on a select few projects because we're still really learning how can we really use these and what's the biggest impact for these tools. Um, some of the things that we've done at Skanska are really looking at how can we increase efficiency and worker safety on site. One tool we used recently was the Mule from Construction Robotics. Okay. Um, so that tool allows workers to not have to worry about lifting masonry. Uh, it's really heavy, as you could guess. Makes sense. And uh, when people are picking that up day after day, brick after brick, it can really have a, a wear and tear strain on their body. So there are a lot of applications out there that really work um, to assist workers and reduce that strain on their body, um, not eliminating the need for the human worker, but just taking a part of that task and taking away the manual lifting. Um, you can see that as well with different um, construction robotics that hold tools, that drill overhead, really trying to protect workers from high strain activities. Uh, another tool we've been using in construction robotics is the Spot Robot from Boston Dynamics. I think everybody's seen Spot running around in some capacity, so it's cool that you're able to work with that. Yeah, definitely. Right now, Spot is mostly being used for progress documentation. So taking photos on site, laser scanning, doing things that are really timely, that just take a lot of time and also don't require a lot of human intellect, uh, if you're taking photos on site at the same spot every time, it takes a long time. And so we're finding that as much as we can automate those redundant activities, we give time back to our people in the field. And we can also see greater consistency and precision with those photos that are captured, um, as well as laser scans. We're able to get really high quality scans from a mobile robotic unit. Another tool that we're really excited about is the HP Site Print. We've done a few tests like one in New York at Penn Station, looking at how can we use robotics to automate site layout. Um, it's a really great tool for increasing precision and also speeding up the time that it takes to do that layout. Um, so lots of applications, but like I said, not being used across the board on all sites. It's still very early on. We have these really high fidelity tools but we're seeing pretty limited usage across the board just because it's really early on. And there's a lot of R&D testing that still needs to go into these um, and a lot of pro process integration so that people can get the best use out of it. I would say the most common construction robotics that you'll see are drones. Um, arguably not even in the category of robotics at this point, but uh, I would say almost every project has seen a drone over it at some point in time. Um, it's a really low cost tool that's easy to deploy at scale. So we're getting a lot of value out of drone use, um, a lot of features we can automate with a drone. So we're able to really increase the, or reduce the flight time, increase the efficiency of using drones on site, um, and really getting a lot of value out of that. It makes a lot of sense. And I think coming back to a part of what you said is the augmentation aspect of what robotics bring into construction, I think is really where the important focus area is. And I've heard a lot of people get a little scared. They go, oh, like they're replacing our jobs. And like first and foremost, the labor shortage guarantees that your job's not going anywhere. But I think that kind of leads into my next question is, what are those big myths and misconceptions of the technology right now? Like where are people focused possibly in the wrong spot that you'd love an opportunity to just kind of do away with that myth and uh, you know 
send everybody in the right direction. Yeah, I think you just brought up the first one, which is that construction workers are scared of robotics. They don't like robotic solutions. And I would say the exact opposite is true. I've been on a lot of project sites where we've had robotic solutions deployed. And first off, people are really excited about it. They want to learn more. They want to engage. Um, it's something new on site, and people are very curious. I would also say the majority of our robotic solutions are directly serving our construction workers and craft. Um, like some of the examples I mentioned earlier, they're helping people go home at the end of the day less tired, less wear and tear, less strain. We're taking people out of dangerous situations and using a robot in those places. So we're directly benefiting our craft population. And in a lot of um, instances, we're actually increasing their productivity and their profitability. So they're able to do more work over a shorter amount of time. Um, a lot of times they're still using the same number of people, but they can just get the job sooner, done sooner and it can help to speed up project schedule. It frees up those crews to work on other projects. Everyone has plenty of work to go around. So if you can get a site offsite, um, you know, turned over to the next job even faster, it's a benefit to everyone. It makes a ton of sense. And when I was still in industry, like the eight hour day just was a myth and finding ways to fix and, and help our teams, one, to, like you said, the safety aspect of it, the, the wear and tear on, on the human. Like, working in construction, it, some of it's very hard work, and to be able to make that safer and also speed some of it along, you get a lot more productivity. It all sounds like a win if you're really intentionally focusing, you know, your energy on where you bring these technologies in. So I'm curious, aside from what you shared already, are there any other big benefits that you're seeing to adopting robotics for the construction industry, especially for somebody who out there is like, how do I convince my boss to, to start bringing this in? Like, where, where should they focus? Yeah, I'd say, like, first and foremost, one of the biggest values we get from construction robotics is making our sites safer and reducing risk and dangerous situations. Um, we had kind of a unique robotics application in one of our UK projects where they were looking at site civil construction and when we're doing road work, um, our biggest fatality risk is people getting struck by a car before the project even starts, just when you're putting the cones out to mark off an area. And that's done by a person. They're exposed to a lot of hazards in that situation. So we actually were able to get a robotic cone laying machine so instead of having a person put up that protection, you're having a machine put up that protection um, and you're really eliminating a huge fatality risk. Um, so just the safety aspect, I think alone, is enough to want to invest in construction robotics. There's so many applications like that where we can put a robot into a dangerous situation. Um, that's where we stop talking about augmentation of labor, so you're not working directly with that robotic t piece. It's actually taking the place of a person where we don't want to put people. We don't want to put people in areas where there's dangerous chemicals, um, where they're going to be doing underground work in a dangerous trench situation. or yeah. where find spaces yeah, are not anywhere spaces. anybody wants to be. No, so we can actually take people out of the places they don't want to be, um, and then in the spaces where um, people are you know, working on site with that robotic application, we're going to reduce the, that strain on the body. We're going to help them to be more efficient and go home at the end of the day um, feeling less tired and able to, to actually spend quality time at home you know, with their families, doing the things they want to do instead of just being completely tired at the end of the day. It, it makes a bunch of sense. And so Let's pretend somebody has taken your advice here and they've qualified to their, their boss or their executives. There's value in bringing this. They've started explaining that this is actually a safety thing and dispelled some of the myths that we were talking about a bit earlier. Where should they start? Obviously, boiling the ocean and say, I'm going to bring robotics to every aspect of my construction workflow probably is going to be a bit overwhelming and likely won't get greenlit. But where are those areas of focus that are going to get some easy wins to, to really start improving you know, a project that hasn't had this benefit before? Yeah, I would say the most important thing to think about is process integration. So what does the existing process look like without the robot? And what does it look like to actually bring the robot into that task? Um, how do you basically hand over from not using the robot to starting to use it? And what does it look like to train people on site? There's a lot of planning that needs to go into using robotics. If you just show up on site with a robot, people are going to have no idea what to do. <laughs> it's going to be really disruptive, really distracting. So there's a lot of planning that goes into place, kind of like we do pre-construction. We think about how we're going to do the work, how we're going to implement these solutions. And the same is true for using robotics. We really need to think about how does this integrate within the process. The other part of that is what is the robot doing? 
What is the actual thing that the robot is going to bring to site? How do we start to think of robotics as just another tool that we have? It has a specific job. Every tool in our toolbox does something. Of so course. what do our robotic solutions do? And how can we be better at defining that? I think one of the challenges that I've seen, one of the biggest um, you know, set setbacks maybe for robotics is that people don't always understand the purpose of our robotic tools. I think Spot is a great example of that. Uh, misconception with Spot is people think it's a toy. It's a robotic toy on, on site. What is it really doing? So how do we communicate really, really clearly with everyone on site? What is this robotic tool doing on site? How do we think of it as just another tool in our tool shed that does a certain thing? Um, so we really need to think about our robots as tools. How do we know exactly what they're doing and really focus? Um, because a lot of our robots, maybe they do more than one thing, but how do we focus on something that's really going to add value? And then start with that. Before you start to boil the ocean and, and try to use your robot for everything, start with something that's really actionable, clear, that tells the story so that people really know, you know, anyone on site, if you ask them, hey, what does that robot do? They could tell you. Yeah, the, the, the challenges of shiny new toy syndrome sometimes as far as getting too much technology looped into the game, I can see that. And I remember thinking back to AU 2019, we had Spot here and it was like a crowd followed it everywhere through the expo. And I, I could see that being similar on a, a project where you didn't communicate the value and that it was coming and why, and now you've distracted everybody. It's like, oh, that's, that's really interesting and also maybe a little bit freaked out if you haven't qualified it well in a forum. Um, so I think you've really covered some of these challenges and everything else. What are, the, what are the biggest ones? Like, again, let's think back to that contractor that has decided, I'm here today and I want to bring robots to my, my project. What are the blockers that you see the most that you can help people mitigate a little bit? Yeah, one of the first things is cost. Um, kind of easy answer there, robotics are expensive, especially if you're purchasing an entire robotic system. I've seen a lot of change within the pricing structure in the past year or two, where way more vendors are looking at doing a lease, doing a project demo or a project pilot. And so when you see the sticker price of some of these solutions, it's really shocking and it's hard to get approval for a six figure investment. But there's oftentimes a lot of other options. So you don't need to just purchase something outright. You could do a smaller pilot, you could do a lease, uh, maybe you share it with a couple different projects. And so I think you know, going at that head on and realizing what do we have to spend, how do we actually make this work so we can get this on site, get some experience, um, but not maybe bite off more than you can chew with that investment. I think another thing with that, like I mentioned, is the process integration, really thinking about how do we bring these on site? How do we make sure we're prepared to bring these on site um, and really clarify what it is that this robot is doing and what is the benefit? Is it going to be increased productivity? Is it going to benefit the safety and you know, well-being of our workers? How do we communicate that value? Um, oftentimes, especially if, if something's completely replacing a worker, we can do a direct comparison of the time that it takes for a person to do that cost versus the time for a robot, and you can do an ROI calculation. Um, I think those are really helpful, but you also need to think about what is the impact, and sometimes impact can't be quantified with hours and dollar signs. So what are the other things that you can do with that that maybe can't be calculated quite as easily? Yeah, there's a, a quality of life, I think, looking back to just you know helping people as far as the amount of toil that happens on their bodies when they're working too. So you, you have a lot of elements to think about. But I, I love that focus of finding your pilot. Like you don't have to boil the ocean and start with all of the things like we were mentioning a moment ago. You find your focus area. It sounds like you can lease things, which is really cool. And you don't have to jump in all the way. You kind of get in and prove that, okay, this has value for our business. And then you scale from there once people think, okay, this is great. We should keep doing it. So you're doing some really cool stuff and it's, it's very impressive. What advice would you have for somebody else out there who is interested in working on emerging technology or robotics? Like, how, how can somebody else, you know, jump in two feet first? There are so many different ways to get involved and get exposure to robotics. Like you mentioned, at AU three years ago, we had Spot roaming around. This year, we have the HP SitePrint robot doing demos throughout all of AU. So going to construction technology conferences is a great place to get exposure. Um, there's also a lot of interest just if you reach out to the vendor, you can set up a demo, you can actually hear one-on-one -on -one from that product team, what does that do, um, and start talking about what it could look like to use that robot on your site. 
Actually, during 2020, I did a call with Boston Dynamics and I got to remotely drive Spot <laughs> from the comfort of my living room in my pajamas um, and see how Spot interacted. And um, there's a lot of opportunities to remotely control robots, to actually see what's happening um, from afar or you know, go in person and talk to people and see those live demos. I would also say there's a really big community of people that are interested in construction robotics. There are so many meetup events. Um, that's a really great place just to learn from other people, to see all different types of robots. I think we talk a lot about kind of the, the hallmark robots, but there's a lot more out there that are doing these really niche applications. Um, so just getting involved with your community in any major city, I promise you, you can find a robotics meetup. Um, so a lot of dip different opportunities to get involved and learn more about robotics. It sounds like if, if you want to chase that, there's there's so many opportunities to do it. And I, I like your plug for the vendors. I don't think I've ever had a vendor where I reached out to them and said, will you show me your thing? That said no. So that makes sense if you want to get some exposure. And of course, if you're here, if you want to talk to anybody else, um, there's a bunch of stuff to take a, take a peek at as well. But aside from robotics, and it sounds like you are excited and interested in them, are there any other trends or things that you're looking towards in the future tied to the construction industry that you'd like to share today? I'm really interested to see how we can combine robotics and machine learning. Um, there's a lot of robots that do a thing that you teach it to do. You can you know, teach Spot to walk around your site to carry out a specific task. But what would it look like if a robot could actually analyze in real time the site conditions and could flag a safety issue or it could pick up a piece of trash um, or it could autonomously do all of your progress tracking? I think if we equip robots with machine learning solutions, the potential of what we can do with them will skyrocket. Um, and it'll take a little bit of time to get there. So I think that's something I'm looking forward to seeing more of. Um, I'm also just really excited to see progress documentation be completely automated. I think it's something that we invest a lot of time into because it's so important, but it's a huge, huge time suck for a lot of our people that have more important issues to focus on. Um, I really hope, fingers crossed, 10 years from now, I don't see anybody walking around the site with a monopod and a 360 camera. I want that to be completely automated. Um, I think that we'll get a lot of value out of that. Um, also, just with increased consistency of those captures, if we have that being completely automated, um, I think there's a lot that we can actually do to apply that data. Um, I also think that we're gonna start seeing robotics become more diverse in the things that they'll do, kind of like I mentioned with the machine learning options. Um, we have a lot of specific tools that do one thing right now, but I think we'll see robots diversifying to provide more value, uh, maybe doing you know, site safety checks or surveillance or um, really just tackling a lot of different issues with one solution um, so that you don't necessarily need to purchase 15 robots for your site to do all of those things we can start to combine some of those applications. Um, and I think also we're gonna see more and more robots taking on more and more tasks. Um, we're kind of just at the tip of the iceberg at this point, but there's so many opportunities for automating um, a lot of things in construction to increase precision and productivity and to continue to keep our workers even safer on site. It all makes so much sense. And as we look to, to find ways to man take some of our manual processes in hit them at scale. I, I think to you know artificial intelligence and augmented reality and all of these different tools where like a human could go walk the site and check and see if your scaffolding is okay and identify that. But there's there's a threshold that a superintendent or safety manager can actually do. And when you're deploying all these different tools, now with Spot or something where you don't have a guy actually carrying a camera around, you freed up those people to do other things and also hopefully have made your site safer because you know humans can only do so much and with the constraints that our industry is under right now, whether it's regards to labor or resources or schedule constraints or any of the other things that I'm sure everybody is tired of talking about right now, but also are just terribly important in fundamental construction, it's a huge win. So I, I think your, your head is in the right place as a, a fellow construction nerd. Um, and aside from that, Thank you so much for joining me today. I've, I've learned a bunch of ro about robotics in the last 20 minutes or so, and uh, I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, Eric. Cool. Well, anybody out there listening, this is obviously Autodesk Digital Builder Podcast. We are recording again tomorrow live from 10 to 11 in the morning. I've got another episode coming in just a few minutes. Everybody, thank you so much for your time. And Brooke, again, it was just a pleasure meeting you. I appreciate it. Thank you.